Well, hi there, friends. Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library. And Brill and I are here today to talk to you about some absolutely fantastic books. But also, most importantly, to welcome you into 2023. Woohoo! That's right, we are in January of 2023. We've got a brand new month of a brand new year. We've got all kinds of new reading goals that we can set for ourselves. Maybe you want to try a new genre that you haven't before. Maybe you want to try a new author that you haven't before. Maybe you just want to hit a certain number of books you read or pages read or time read. But what, however you want to do it, maybe you're just like me and you just like to read as your mood dictates, right? Which is how I like to do it. So if you want to read some really fantastic books this year, that's wonderful. And we've got so many different things to talk to you about. And that is the most exciting thing about books, right? Is that every week there are more books that come out. So you will never, ever, ever probably get to the end of your TBR list, which is exciting and also very nerve wracking, especially for me who just wants to keep reading and never, ever stop. So because of that, I thought this would be a really great time to talk about some of my favorite books that I read in 2022. Now, there are a lot of different categories that I'm going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks because it was hard to whittle it down. I read 500 books in 2022. Whew, 500 books. So that was a lot of books I had to try to narrow down into some of my favorites. And this is a very subjective list, right? So they're the books that I thought were the best books I read, but maybe you read some other ones that you're like, Miss Rebecca, why didn't you talk about this book or this book? And if that's the case, leave me a comment below in the comment section. I'd love to hear about it or shoot me an email or come to the library and talk to me about it because I want to hear about some of your favorite books. I'm very excited about that. So this week, we're going to start off with talking about my top five favorite adult books um, of 2022. Now this is just uh, literary fiction only. We're going to do a couple other um, categories throughout the next coming weeks, but this is just basically regular fiction. Um, we'll talk about specific genres following the next following weeks. So number five, Small Angels by Lauren Owen. Now this book, and actually now that I think about it, all the books in my top five list, with the exception of one, were books that completely took me by surprise. So these were all books, this one included, that I was not expecting to love as much as I did. They were books I took a chance on, books I had never heard of before or never heard of, read the author before and just thought I would give it a go. And they surprised me not only to love them, but that they made the top five list. So that just goes to show you sometimes when you take a chance on something that maybe you normally wouldn't, you find a real hidden treasure. That was the case with this one. So this book is uh, a little bit creepy. It's definitely mysterious and it has a lot of different things. It has hauntings. It has a wedding. It has a uh, family dynamics. It's got some romance in it. Um, it's <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. But really my favorite aspect of this book was the writing. The writing in this book, in this story was so good. It was just beautiful. This book was so beautifully written. I loved every single word of this book. It was phenomenal. So it's basically about this, this um, set of woods called the Mock Beggar wood, Woods surrounding this little English um, country, you know, this little countryside town in England, okay, called Mock Beggar Woods. And this one family, Lucia and her sisters have grown up on this farm right outside the woods. They know that the woods are very dangerous and harrowing, but they also know that the woods are very beautiful as well. There is a family story that is revealed throughout the course of this book of why they live so close to the woods and why they are so drawn to it, um, but that gets revealed later on. So she, Lucia particularly is drawn to these woods. She goes in there all the time. She becomes friends with this lonely girl named Kate, um, but something happens in the woods with Kate and Lucia that Kate has never really been able to get over. Something very dark, something very scary. So fast forward now to the present because this happened when they were kids. Kate's brother is marrying a woman named Chloe who has seen the chapel um, in the town and said, I, we have to get married here. It's so beautiful. So even though he feels like that's probably not the best idea and Kate really doesn't want anything to do with it, 
they pr decide to proceed forward. So now you've got all these different hauntings and things going on, and Lucia has to come back and try to make things right, and so does Kate. And they, in doing so, they have to face what happened in the past. So like I said, this book has everything. There is mystery, there's history, there's spookiness, there's friendship, there's family, there's love, there's romance. Everything about this book I loved. I couldn't couldn't tell you one thing about it that I didn't and like I said every word of it was just written so beautifully highly highly recommend this one small angels by Lauren Owen now the next book is actually the book that I was expecting to love so remember I said that out of these five four of them really took me by surprise now, I was expecting to love this book, but I was not expecting it to make the top five list. It's the first time this author has for me. And it's the first time this genre has for me, too. Um, so that book is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Oh my gosh, Emily Henry is amazing. She writes these fantastic romantic comedies that are just so, so good. Um, the first one uh, was took place in Michigan, which was Beach Read, which was what was just so incredible. Um, People We Meet on Vacation was her second book. This is the third one in this genre in the romantic comedy that she's written because she has written other books. She's written books uh, for YA and she's written other stuff that's also very good. Um, but these in particular are just fantastic. But this one, I love this book so much. And I, I do love romantic comedies, don't get me wrong, but they don't tend to usually end up on some of my favorites list. Not for any particular reason other than I maybe don't read as many of them as I probably should. And some of the other books tend to overshadow them when I'm reading some of the other books. So for this one to make that list means it's very, very special. So the thing, one of the things I love about Emily Henry is that she is hilarious. Her dialogue between characters is some of the best, hands down, some of the best written dialogue I've ever read in a book. Um, and this one in particular is just, <laughs> it's, absolutely fantastic so this book starts out really funny with basically saying like you know how you read you um read those like really sappy christmas stories or you watch those hallmark movies about you know this small town girl who um moves to the city and then goes back to her hometown and then falls in love with someone and um well this girl is the main character nor is not like that she is the typical other girlfriend that usually gets dumped in these types of stories. She lives in the city. She has a um, high-powered job as um, basically she's obsessed with books. She is a literary agent and she loves her work. She works all the time. She loves it. She does not want to go move down to a little hokey town and, you know, <laughs> do basically do all those things. She is the girl in those movies that always gets screwed over, that the guy always leaves to go after the simpler more um down to earth type girl and so she starts out the book saying that that she's read this story a hundred times a million times and she's always the one that gets screwed over and in her love life yes she has she has not had very much luck she gets left all the time with for these <laughs> these guys just leave her for these other girls and it's just it's very heartbreaking so she's a literary agent she runs up against this editor who is just as cutthroat as her and they clash because he's a little bit of a jerk and <laughs> at least at first as she thinks. So when her sister books her and um, no, herself and Nora a vacation to this little town that is featured in a book that she wants to love and she decides she wants to revive it, Nora reluctantly follows along. Well, when they get there, <laughs> Nora discovers that this editor that she keeps clashing with, um, his family runs a bookstore down there. So he is down there a lot too. So now she is coming up against him even more than she was in the city. So this is an absolute enemies to lovers trope, which is my favorite romance trope. I love that when people are fighting terribly and then they fall in love. I love it. And like I said, the dialogue is so so good if you love a good romance story if you love great characters and and the other thing about emily henry's books is it's not it's not just this fluffy read that you can just be like all right whatever like there is really great character development here there is really these characters are not forgettable these characters you will love and root for they're absolutely amazing highly highly recommend all of emily henry's books but particularly book lovers Okay, now we're on to number three. Number three, number three book of 2022 
The Change by Kirsten Miller. This was also a Good Morning America book club pick, if that sort of thing is important to you. Um, again, this was another one that I, um, I went with on a whim. Was not expecting to love it as much as I did. I cackled while reading this book. I didn't laugh. I didn't giggle. I didn't chuckle. I cackled. I full out cackled while reading this book. So this is another one of those books that has, it's like a multi-genre sort of book. It has a lot of different aspects to it. It's a, um, a murder mystery. It is a thriller. It has just a teeny bit of magic in it. It is an empowering book for anybody to read, but particularly women. Um, and parts of it are just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so this book is about this small coastal town and about these girls that keep getting murdered that nobody seems to care about. Um, you know, that somebody is either paying off their families to be quiet about it. Um, somebody is maybe paying off the police to be quiet about it, or some of the police anyway. Um, so three middle-aged women take it upon themselves to figure out what is going on with these murders and root out the corruption in their town. Now, a couple things that are very interesting about this is that there are middle-aged women, which, you know, a lot of times in books, middle-aged women don't really get a good starring role, right? They're kind of pu pushed to the sidelines, not these women. So the other part about it that's very interesting is that every one of these women have a certain type of power that has manifested in them to help them on this quest. So the one woman is completely good with with plants and growing things and all kinds of stuff like that. There is another woman who is really, really good with, um, with ghosts. She is good about um, talking to ghosts. So she is trying to talk to the ghosts of these dead girls to find out what is going on with that. Um, and the other woman has become really, really strong. And she has this like fiery type of uh, magic that she uses to get things done. So like I said, there is a lot of stuff going on in this book that is absolutely amazing. It is very frustrating to read because you're reading about these girls that are being taken advantage of and killed and nobody is helping them. But it's also very empowering and strong to see these three women working together who just are, are will not stop at nothing no matter what they come up against. Threats to their family, threats to themselves, they will not stop until they have solved this case. And it's amazing. Everything about this book, if you've ever, <laughs> if you've ever been catcalled, if you've ever dealt with sexual harassment in the workplace, if you've ever dealt with somebody treating you like you're less because you're a woman, this book will really resonate with you. It is fantastic. And it's not a man bashing book. So I also don't want it to, um, come across as, oh, you know, women are the best things in the world and all men suck. Because there are definitely male characters in this book that are fantastic as well. And there are female characters in this book that suck. So it is very well-rounded. It is not just a complete like, oh, you know, we're just going to talk about bashing men. But the men that deserve to be bashed in this book, oh, it is very rewarding to read what happens to them. So I highly recommend this one, The Change by Kirsten Miller. All right, we're down to the last two, right? We're down to the wire. Now, I will say that for both of these books, books number two and books number one in the um, in this category of best books I read in 2022, I really struggled with which one to put first and which one to put second because I love them both so much and they're just absolutely amazing. So it was very, very hard, um, but I had to do it in the end because obviously we had to make this video, right? So number two... Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This book is amazing. And it might not even be one that you feel like sounds like something you would want to read because I felt like that too. I got it um, and read it sort of on a whim because some of my friends were reading it and said that it was so good. And I was like, well, this doesn't really sound like my cup of tea, but I'm going to try it. And it's number two on the list because it's that good. So this is a story of these two young people who bond together in the hospital when they're kids 
they become really good friends, close friends, and then they develop a super, super popular video game together. And this is the story of their lives and that video game. So you do not have to like or appreciate video games to understand or love this book. Um, I do like and appreciate video games, which definitely played a part in me loving it, but you have you don't have to know anything about video games because it's not about video games. This story is about these two people, their relationships with each other, their relationships with the other people in their lives, and it's just absolutely phenomenal and once you get to I try to say this without tearing up once you get to the part of the book where you discover what the title how the title relates to the actual story I guarantee you're going to sob hysterically this book is everything it is so so good it deals with so many different aspects and it's beautifully written too highly highly recommend it please please give it a shot tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow all right Last, but not least, because it's obviously number one on this list, best book of this, of not this year, but of 2022, of last year, number one, Unlikely Animals by Annie Hartnett. This book blew me away. So I read Annie Hartnett's previous book, Rabbit Cake, and really enjoyed it, loved it. So I was like, I'll give this one a shot. This is her new book last year. Um, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. This book is so unique. It's quirky. It's fun. It's deep. It's beautiful. It's everything. This book is everything. If you haven't read it yet, please read it this year because I think you will really love it as, as well. I um, have been recommending it left and right to everybody. Um, a couple of librarian friends that work at the <laughs> work at our library have read it and also loved it. It's just it's just so so good. There is it is about this little town. It's about this little town in New Hampshire, and there is a, I just want to find the little map of the town, which is very cute. There is a little map of the town in the beginning of the book. It's a little town in New Hampshire, and there is a lot going on with this book. So the main character, the main character, Emma, um, started out having really big plans for her life. She was planning to go to medical school. She went out to the West Coast to start to do that. Um, but she's come back because she finds out that it's not working out for various reasons. So she's come back sort of defeated. She's living with her parents. But the other reason she's come back and living with her parents is because her dad is dying. So her dad has this um, disease. He's got this tumor in his brain that is causing him to hallucinate animals. So he was a professor and he started to imagine that there were all these cats in the room one day when there were not cats in the room. So he is now living at home, um, struggling with his health and she has moved back home to sort of help and to, you know, to deal with her own situation. Um, he is also hallucinating this, um, <laughs> this, this other person in the, in, <laughs> in, in history that cared for different animals. So there's the animal aspect of that as well. So, at the same time, when she comes home, Emma finds that her best friend um, from childhood has gone missing. And then nobody really seems to care much about that because her best friend from childhood um, was um, addicted to drugs and they figure she's just burned out somewhere. She's maybe dead somewhere. It's whatever. Because the other thing is this town that she's from has a very, very bad drug problem. So people aren't really giving this case the attention it deserves. So she decides she is going to try to find her friend and her dad is going to help. He is going to help her find her friend. Now, overarching this whole thing with all these different things going on is the narrator of this book, which is my favorite part of the book because it is multiple narrators. It is an omniscient sort of narrating situation because it is being narrated by ghosts from the cemetery in this town. I don't know that I've ever read a book like that before. So all the ghosts that have grown up, lived, and died in this town that are in the cemetery are watching everything going on, and they are the ones narrating it. And they are rooting for Emma, and they are rooting for her dad, and they are rooting for everybody. And it is just so beautiful and quirky and fun. And again, the writing is really fun. And I mean, we're dealing with some very heavy topics here, like, you know, dealing with a parent dying, we're dealing with grief, we're dealing with drug addiction, we're dealing with failed aspirations. But it's done in such a beautiful, fun, human way that you just, you, it, this book will not bring you down. This book will raise you up. It is a super beautiful, it will make you feel so good about everything, the world. It's just 
I can't recommend this book enough. Number one book of the year, Unlikely Animals. Well, that's the top five best books that I read in 2022. Next week, we're going to do top five runners up. So maybe if there's a book you thought should have been on that list that you didn't see, maybe it will show up on that list as well. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if there's a book that you think should be on there, leave me a note in the comments, send me an email, come talk to me in the library. I want to hear what some of your favorite books are. And hopefully you will find some new favorite books within these five that we talked about today. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Have a wonderful day.